we're here in the chateau. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a merger of the old with the new. And as we talk about the future now, and uh, every organization, every sector, every industry is dealing with technology and the kind of technology uh, disruption, as well as the opportunities that it's throwing up. What does it mean for you here at the IOC? How are you using uh, digitization? Uh, do you have a view on what AI could do in terms of shaping the future of the games? That's a big topic, you know. It, first of all, all this digitalization, you know, has uh, led, and uh, this is uh, the principle under which uh, we have to address then the, the challenges, but even more the, the opportunities. That it is not uh, like uh, in the past anymore uh, that people and young people at some stage in their life will be confronted with sport. Mm. This is not true anymore. They'll be confronted with Instagram or sport on Instagram yeah, maybe. But, but, but uh, they can <laughs> find many other yes. huh? distractions than, than, than sport. So it means we have, we cannot wait anymore for the young people to come to us mm we have to go where they are, in the real world and in the digital world. In the digital world, uh, this means uh, two things. Uh, the first, what, what is obvious, you know, it's uh, communication. Mm. We have to go to Instagram, uh, we have uh, to go to the social uh, platforms. We have to get our message uh, across, so this is why uh, as a, a major part of our reforms uh, at, at, uh, 10 years ago, uh, we created uh, the Digital Olympic Channel, uh, which is now already reformed again, but uh, because of all this uh, reform of the reform, uh, very successful. And um, uh, the, uh, the other is uh, that uh, we have uh, to uh, embrace mm. uh, uh, the appearance of eSports mm. while again respecting uh, our values. That means in a, in a, in a nutshell uh, we cannot identify ourselves uh, with uh, uh, any uh, games uh, which are against our values. Mm. So. Olympic values and killer games, there is a red line mm. uh, uh, between. Uh, but uh, we uh, can embrace, in particular, virtual sports, means uh, where uh, the, the physical activity mm. is uh, uh, still existing. Uh, take, uh, uh, take cycling. Mm. You know, you, you can have uh, cycling uh, uh, programs uh, uh, digitally uh, uh, which are uh, as demanding as uh, somebody cycling on, 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 on the mm. road. So why... So simulated we, yeah, online. Yeah. How, how, could we, how, how could we ignore this? Mm. You know, and, uh, you, you have uh, these uh, competitions, you, you can... Uh, uh, today, uh, you can cycle your own Tour de France uh, at home mm, uh, with, uh, with a digital uh, program and you can even compete uh, with each other and uh, there are these competition groups. Uh, so is that, is that the future? Are we likely to see virtual sport being included at some point? Uh, that is uh, clearly part of the future. Uh, because it's not only cycling, uh, even now in combat sports, uh, you're, you're going uh, to see it. And uh, we have, uh, you know, started uh, to uh, embrace, uh, to appreciate uh, this uh, development. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had in, in Singapore for the very first time an uh, Olympic eSports final week uh, where there were competitions in, in particular in this kind of uh, virtual sports but where we also 
you know, continued and uh, deepened our dialogue uh, with this, uh, with this uh, industry, uh, with, uh, with the publishers and with the gamers and uh, everybody, everybody involved. Uh, we, we, we cannot ignore this. Uh, the so online okay. gaming at some point in the future could be part of, part of the Olympic Games? Uh, online sports. <laughs> <laughs> Online sports uh, that that will be a decision for for, for, for the future and, and this is you know this uh, esports finally is a, is a kind of testing the waters so mm. we have to see how it goes uh, whether uh, you know these uh, the virtual sports uh, do really keep uh, mm. or gain more attractivity because uh, we also have to see that the virtual sports do only have a very small market share mm. in the overall e-gaming uh, business. So uh, we have to see how this is uh, developing. And uh, then uh, we will have, I think, in principle, uh, three options. Either to say, doesn't work, mm. thank you very much, you do your own thing in, in this uh, business. Or to say some uh, of uh, these virtual sports could be a, a discipline of the traditional sport mm -hmm. in the Olympic Games or uh, to uh, keep uh, or organizing uh, an own event like this uh, Olympic eSports uh, final uh, uh, there for, uh, for uh, eSports. Mm. Uh, this will take uh, uh, some time. You know, this is a classic example of looking at opportunities in adjacencies and you're looking at esports as a possible adjacency mm. at this point in time. Uh, for the lack of a better word, for the Olympic mega franchise, so to speak, mm -hmm. what are the other adjacencies from a revenue point of view, from a monetization perspective, that you're looking at outside of the games and the broadcast and media rights? We are not looking at this uh, from, a, uh, from a monetizing uh, point of view. Uh, we are a, a values-based uh, organization. And uh, therefore, uh, for us, it is uh, about uh, staying uh, relevant. And uh, this uh, eSports engagement, uh, the, for instance, is, is an investment mm. uh, we, we are taking. Uh, we uh, did not look uh, for, for, for business uh, the, uh, in, 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 in this. Uh, for us, it's a means to, to stay relevant uh, in uh, this uh, young uh, generation and in this uh, very particular uh, community. And, uh, but, uh, the more interesting uh, is maybe because uh, this esports is is very obvious. You know, it's uh, yeah. it's it's let's say easy in one way to deal mm. uh, with and also to to anticipate uh, what uh, may happen and not what. Uh, What's is, the hard one? You no, know, not the hard one. The more interesting one is AI. Mm. Uh, what uh, will will happen there? Because uh, this has uh, the potential uh, to change not only all our society, but when the society changes, also the sport mm. uh, uh, changes. And uh, there are a number of challenges, uh, but uh, there are also uh, you know, huge opportunities. And in, in every aspect of uh, sport, mm. uh, it, it will already be a difference on how uh, the young generation will find access to sport. Mm. It will create a big difference and how athletes will be training. Mm. Uh, this will be much more individualized. Mm. Uh, this uh, will be much less related to a particular coach. Uh, this will be uh, uh, not uh, related uh, so much anymore to, to national coaches. Uh, mm. it, it will change the whole refereeing and judging uh, uh, system. Mm. And it will also change uh, 
uh, the organization of uh, the games in very obvious ways. Uh, television you know, will be produced very differently in mm. times of AA than now. But in particular, uh, with regard to, to spectators, the, the big question will be, will the immersive mm. experience AI together with the metaverse, you know, with uh, mm. uh, uh, AR uh, can create, will this lead to uh, the people to say, okay, great, I get everything I want at home on my couch? Yeah. Or will they say, you know, I have uh, so much individual experience in, in all my life, in my business and I'm longing uh, to, 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 be in a, to be in a, yeah. to be in a community yeah. and to, to, to go out there. And even, but even if they go out, they will consume it very differently mm. Mm. Than, uh, than today. So, you know, the, the, the potential is, is enormous and also the challenges, of course, are, 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 are there. And uh, this is the more interesting part. No, you know, you're absolutely right. This is very interesting because as you speak, uh, you know, I'm thinking that is this the next wave of democratization of high performance sport? Because as you pointed out, you know, it could be a, a kid sitting some part of the world with no access to a high performance coach will now suddenly be able to have that kind of training, that kind of simulation that AI might provide. Does this sort of, is this the next leap when we talk about democratizing high performance sport? Uh, definitely, this is one of the, 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 the potentials. Huh? Uh, so far, what digitalization uh, could do in this uh, respect was, uh, uh, let's say, Im 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 improving an already existing mm. uh, high-level training mm. or, or athlete. Uh, uh, you know, it could be more and more subtle, uh, yeah. uh, but uh, then, potentially, every kid on this planet can have access yeah. to a high-performance uh, coach, yeah. adapted to, uh, to, to their body, uh, adapted uh, to uh, uh, their, uh, their emotions and uh, their uh, uh, favoring uh, sport. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 th this is a, a huge potential at the same time. It's a challenge mm. uh, because where does uh, such an almost absolute individualization mm. lead to? Mm. Mm? Because at the end, uh, then these kids, the training can be very individual. Mm. Uh, but uh, the competition uh, yes. then will be either in a team or it will be a competition with others. Yeah. And uh, how uh, will they adjust uh, then, you know, their, their mindset mm. all of a sudden being 90% of the year, you know, alone yeah. with their personal coach on the screen and uh, then all of a sudden competing in the, competing in the to, real world, huh? yeah. yeah. But you know, what, what I want to understand from you, if, if you had a chance to, to get a do-over, uh, would, would you rather compete now with AI and, you know, ML and all and access to digital technologies or, or were you happier in 1976? Okay. Is it harder to win today though with all, with the access to so much technology that's constantly enhancing and improving uh, your odds? Well, you know, everything in life uh, has its time and uh, this I, I, I respect. Uh, uh, the, the, very much, and I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm somehow romantic about uh, the, the, my time uh, as an athlete and, and this uh, uh, generation. And I, I, I would not like uh, to miss, you know, uh, these uh, romantic times of uh, the, being an athlete and, and making uh, these uh, experiences, but. Uh, I would also not like uh, to miss uh, the, the opportunity I have uh, uh, now 
uh, to uh, help and to contribute to prepare the sport uh, for the future. You know, 10 years on, and you spoke about the reforms and the reforms of the reforms uh, uh, that you've been driving mm. forward. What do you see as the unfinished agenda or the partially finished agenda on, on your dashboard today? What would you like to prioritize as you move forward? And I'll also ask you this question in the context of the fact that whether it's government or large organizations like the IOC or any other sort of sporting body or any other global a large body like a multilateral institution, there is a trust deficit that exists and a trust deficit that's only widening with time. How do you bridge that? Now, let me start uh, with the letter. We, we are living in an era of mistrust uh, that uh, you, you can see in every, in every respect. You know, it's, uh, it's a government, it's media, it's uh, elite. In every, in, in, in every respect, uh, there are very worrying uh, uh, developments uh, going on that uh, you, you can see people do not even trust uh, their family anymore. Uh, the only thing you can do uh, as an uh, organization is uh, to be uh, as transparent as uh, possible, uh, to uh, try to, to explain uh, your uh, decisions uh, all over again. And in the end, I think what is the most important, you have to have the trust of your constituency. Mm. If you're losing this trust, you're gone. Uh, so uh, you, you, you have uh, to make sure that within your organization that there is trust, that there is confidence. You, you need not always to be of one opinion, mm. uh, uh, but uh, you, you must have a, a base of, of respect and, uh, and uh, trust uh, in, in, in each other if you don't have this you will be gone more sooner than, uh, uh, than, uh, than, than later. Uh, uh, with uh, regard to uh, the reforms, reforms in our times are always work in progress. Mm. Our time is so disruptive that uh, you, you can never say, you know, this uh, reform now, this is done and this will stay for for five years even you know uh, the, the times of uh, plans and budgets uh, for years are over this is all more illusion you know if you think uh, you know your uh, your budget in a in a company or in a in a, in a government from five years five year plans or so uh, it doesn't help uh, anybody anymore. And the same is uh, with uh, regard to, to, to social uh, developments. Mm. Uh, this is why we have to keep uh, changing. Now, when, when I introduced uh, our reform uh, program at the beginning of my, my term, I uh, needed to convince uh, there my uh, IOC uh, friends and uh, colleagues uh, to vote uh, for, for these uh, reforms. And uh, you know, then I uh, referred uh, somehow to, to Hamlet, uh, to Shakespeare, by uh, saying, uh, change or be changed, uh, that is uh, the question. And until today, uh, you know, in the anti-room of mm. our executive board, mm. I, uh, in my handwriting, I wrote on the wall, change or be changed so that everybody who is coming to the boardroom mm. knows uh, what to expect and what to do. 
you know, on, on that change, of course, which is mm. what you're hoping to do when you're driving some of those changes, and you will be changed also because of the external environment. It's been wonderful speaking to you about the past, but more importantly, about the future and how you intend to ensure that the Olympics, not just the sporting uh, extravaganza, but the movement remains relevant for the future. Mm. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you and uh, looking forward uh, to my visit in India. Absolutely look forward to your visit in India. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this CNBC TV 18 special conversation from all of us here on the team. For now, goodbye and many thanks for watching.